Over the years, I have printed a lot of filmmaking equipment. Problem is, most of it isn't really enough for one video, so I never really post much about it. But I do want to share some of the ideas, so in this video, I'll compile some of the highlights. These are broken up into three categories. Gear, props, and miscellaneous. Starting with the almost literal elephant in the room, my giant camera arm. This is, by far, the single largest and most useful piece of media gear I own. When filming yourself making something, the filming can easily double or more the time it takes to complete a project. The camera arm allows me to quickly get dynamic coverage from almost any position. Okay, I've got this angle. Can we get a higher angle? Boom, that was quite like three seconds. I design my own rather than use someone else's because my camera is significantly heavier than average and I wanted to build something more robust than other solutions look to me. I plan to finalise it in the future but just haven't been able to justify the time. A second piece of gear is my lighting rails. I have these all over the shop and simply, they allow me to quickly reposition my video lights. This is another half-baked concept that works good enough for me, but I'd like to polish it a bit more before releasing. I've had these for two years now, and they got a lot more use before I started filming almost exclusively with daylight. Earlier this year, I showed how I turned a junk camera into a macro lens, and I think I've used it in almost every video since. It has a unique look to it that makes it harder to use than a commercial macro lens, but I've come to like the shallow depth of field and can, with the right subject, create some quite striking imagery. Finally in the gear category, the ground level camera mount. This is the only real invention in this video, and it's lived on my B camera ever since I made it. It allows me to position my camera on the ground with a great deal of adjustment while not losing the detail that would occur with older solutions. As an avid hiker, I find it to be just enough camera support, allowing me to not worry about piling up rocks to get shots while out and about, while also not needing to bring a tripod. Honourable mentions for gear include parts for this camera rig, lens caps, covers, cases, and more. Nothing super exciting here. I'm shaming you, Nick. <laughs> this is horrible. Nick has asked me to print him a new body cap. You can try to get on that. Whew, much better. Moving on to props, 3D printing has entered the art department. I have printed props for a few short films, including videos on this channel, but also more dramatic productions. No. The biggest undertaking of this was for a short film I co-directed as part of a film course I did last year. Entitled Cleaner Solutions, it follows an upstart crime scene cleaner demanding better working conditions from his criminal employers. The most obvious prints were the nameplates for the boss and his goons, which needed to have crisp white writing to stand out on camera. I had just gotten an X1 Carbon, and these were one of the first multicolour prints I ever did. Also from the boss's office was a custom fish tank bubbler featuring a drowning man in concrete shoes. If I remember correctly, he was a default blender model that I printed with a hole for a brass tube. Off camera here, I'm frantically trying to make bubbles come out, since the air blower was too loud for dialogue. I'll pretty commonly print props for my normal videos as well. Even the real camera lucida from the start of that video is actually, in part, a 3D printed prop with a few random brass knobs. The third category is miscellaneous. Not printed, but I went through a stage of laser cutting storage cases from floor mats. I found this method let me use cheap foam on my small diode laser, which are not designed to cut super deep. Especially on set, these have been super useful to have, 
and it saves me so much money compared to getting them made by someone else. Also in miscellaneous is actually the ball vise. The camera arm can't do everything and sometimes I need to move the work instead. Especially with small parts or macro shots, I use the ball vise to really finely tune the shot I'm getting. Finally, we have the page turner, which, as the name implies, turns pages. For cleaner solutions, a bill of demands is handed over from the workers to their employers. We got the whole crew to sign it and I thought it would be nice to stylize the credits using it, also including the Polaroid photos taken by one crew member on set. To make turning each page repeatable, I devised this little contraption using a rotary switch and some gears to let me turn each page between the same 12 positions. And there we have it, a slew of weird and wonderful bits of media gear that make my life a little bit easier, and all of them made possible with 3D printing. The made possible bit is what I find so cool about the technology. While I do use other materials, the complex work I'm able to produce is several orders of magnitude greater than if I was just using traditional tools. I hope maybe this video gave you some ideas. Files, where available, are in the description. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.